I write more prescription medi medications. I write more prescriptions than I'll bet most of you in here do. I really like what Dr. Palarano said about using the lowest dose possible. I also like what he said, what that, and that was, you need to be a physician. And I think you need to be, I'll add to that and say, you need to be a good physician. You have to be a doctor first, my opinion, before we can do any of this. So our basic medical knowledge has got to be there. And that's what I'm going to stress here. Drugs and prescriptions and pharmaceuticals, they're not bad, they have a role. But the limited, the way we use them, every time you write a prescription, what I would like to leave you with is think about what's the dose, why am I writing it, and when am I going to stop that drug? That's what I want you to be aware of, and that's what we're going to be talking about during this presentation today. Due to the increase of prescription medications in children, nutrient deficiencies today are, I believe, much greater. When I was growing up, and I've been in practice 26 years, when I was growing up, when I was 10, I came to the United States when I was 10 years old. I was born in Sri Lanka. When I came to the United States when I was 13, 14, 15 years of age, Nobody was on prescription medicines. I mean, what children were on prescription medicines? Today, who isn't on a prescription medicine? So children already, and I'll get into this in much more detail, at a much earlier age start this. And of course, we all know the basic premise that our food is really depleted in nutrients. We know that, and I'm going to show you some data and some statistics on that. And there's no question that the prescription medications we take today are depleting our body and all of those are contributing to disease and they're starting at an earlier age on a cellular level. We're going way beyond the macroscopic view and we've gotten more into the, the nanoscopic view, if you will. So let's get through some of this stuff very quickly. Researchers find that nearly 70% of Americans or on at least one prescription drug and more than half receive at least two prescriptions. This is something we see all the time. 20% of the U.S. patients are also found to be on five or more prescription medications. And this is according to the Mayo Clinic and this is June of this year. So if you look at what are the most frequently used prescription medications, I remember growing up asthma bronchodilators for children, I mean, yeah, you know, you heard about it once in a while. But I take care of a lot of nurses, a lot of school nurses, and that's all they do all day, is give ch children their ADD medications and their inhalers. And that's what the nurses seem to be doing besides all the paperwork. CNS, I mean, central nervous system stimulants in adolescence, when we were growing up, ages 12 to 19, it was unheard of. Today, everybody's on, every child has ADD or ADHD, and, you know, they're on some kind of a CNS stimulant. Antidepressants for 20-year-olds? I mean, come on. How depressed can you be at 20 at the prime of your life? Cholesterol-lowering drugs when you're 60? Okay. If you want to use Crestor 5 milligrams three times a week, I'm okay with that. As long as your, your numbers aren't dropping too far and you're on CoQ10, and we'll get into that also. So these are some of the drugs that are out there. But here's what I call some of the scary stuff. Cows, raised on, cows are raised on corn rather than grass, and they consume more calories and more omega-6s than omega-3s. The omega-6 to omega-3 ratio that's consumed in this country today is about 10 to 1. We know that omega-6s are pro-inflammatory agents. So making sure that our fish and our cows are, are fed grass and not corn becomes a very important piece that we need to at least be aware of. Between 1985 and 2010, the cost of drinks, sweetened drinks with high fructose corn syrup dropped 24% in price. And by 2006, children in the U.S. consumed an extra 130 calories per day through these drinks. Doesn't sound like a lot of calories, but it's per day and it's cumulative. 
Scientific America, 2012. For those of you that read Scientific America, I read something on, uh, in Scientific America on particles and particle motion. I had to stop reading it after the first page. I had no idea what I was reading. I mean, it was amazing. I love reading Scientific America, but sometimes it's just... But interesting, interesting reading in there. They had a whole issue on food uh, beginning of this year that was just outstanding. Outstanding. Oh, it was a really a GMOs and the whole deal. Okay, so a lot of my colleagues will say to me, Derek, you know, you're always talking about vitamins. And I remember during my residency, I would take my, you know, my multivitamin and I'd take, you know, at least a, a, a probiotic. And the, the, my attendings would look at me and say, God, De Silva's, man, he's one strange dude, isn't he? Man, he's always taking something. Well, a lot of my attendings to the, that were attendings back then, and even my colleagues that were in training, are limping. They can't walk. They can't run. I'm 56. They can't keep up with anybody, let alone make rounds in the hospital. So there's a reason that we did this. My, my two sons have been on supplements since the day when they were born. And, you know, we were talking yesterday, and my oldest son said, I don't remember being sick in college. And he had a good time in college. You can ask him that at the booth at some point if you'd like to do that, on how he had a good time in college, but that's okay. But did you know that you'd have to eat a dozen bowls of spinach today to equal the iron content of one bowl of spinach served in the 1930s? That's pretty frightening. Nutrient depletion. And there's a gentleman by the name of Dr. Linus Pauling, two-time Nobel laureate, who, who said that you could trace every disease and every ailment to a mineral deficiency. Minerals are so critical. And there are people who say more critical than vitamins themselves because mineral con minerals control a lot of cellular function. European Journal of uh, Clinical Nutrition found that a deficiency of various nutrients altered immunity even when the deficiency was very mild. So we always want to be in that reference range in the upper third of the class or the upper half of the class versus the lower half of the class.